it's kind of a get to know that this that feel like that this is your last season. You know, I think has that affected you know the storytelling? Do you feel like it feels more definitive going in, like from the very beginning? I feel like I'm pulling out all the stops. Like any brain that's left in me, I'm digging. I am. It's it's kind of nice. You're not metering yourself anymore. You're not mm -hmm. like sort of playing this long game. It's like you. If we've got ideas, use them. If we have things that we haven't played with the other characters, we're using them now. Like it's been pretty full on, like full gun hog. Yeah. Well, you've always killed it with brains, but you are. I mean, and you're still kind of continuing that. I wouldn't say that. You do a teenage there's a, girl. There's a market. <laughs> I peaked two years ago. Um, no, but you know, I don't know what's happening. This is the first year where I haven't asked ahead for what's what's going on. I always do. So the stakes are high enough right now that I think we're pulling out all the stops, like we're swinging for the fences. But because I don't know how it ends, mm. I, I don't know if it's like oh, but we're gonna leave the door cracked or mm. you know. I, I really don't know. And but we don't know what happens with Liv and Major. So, um, I know what I want to happen. Same. Friend zone. <laughs> JK, guys, I want to work. We're a pretty team, Liv, You guys have had pretty bad luck with your love lives outside of each other. You guys each season seem to kind of get back together. Who would you say all? has had worse luck? What? Like, four four more? Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to be like, yeah, poor Major, but then I mean, it was like, Four boyfriends died. Four dead boyfriends. And you still didn't learn your lesson. It's like I'm celebrating more dead boyfriends anniversaries than I am like birthdays you, or anything else. That would be funny if when they if, if we end up getting together and like they show like a montage of, of just us continuing to visit Forest Lawn. We're like, oh <laughs> sorry Lol, rest in peace. Oh sorry Justin, rest in peace. Great too, yeah. All the hits. All the hits, you know. But I'll I'll see them. Very generous of you. We've already seen what we look like as an old married couple. That was nice. That's true. Do you think there is hope for them to have a happy ending? I do. I think most romances, most relationships that I respect and believe in have had some sort of chaos that have led, it led into them. I think it makes you know each other that much better. You've been yeah. friends as well. You, um, The kind of fairy tale illusion is shattered and that's good because I think you don't really know somebody when you think that they're perfect. So um, we certainly have, have seen other sides to, to each other. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, also, before we even did the pilot, when I, when the pilot, when this product came around... Is that an earthquake? No. Mm -hmm. Did you feel it? No. It's the chemistry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I asked, popped, I was like, I, I wanted to have a couple questions, and so Rob was kind enough to call me, and one of the ones in our conversation I asked was... No one's uh, feeling that. Mm -mm. Ghosts. Do you smell burnt toast? <laughs> <laughs> Sulfur? I'm telling you, you will all look at Twitter in like an hour and you'll be like, oh sorry, there was one registered. It was that kind of earthquake that doesn't shake the lights. Or Highly sensitive rose, yeah. just read it like a, like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> like now, like in senselessness. Um, but I asked Rob in the phone call, I was like, so what's the story with, uh, with living majors? That they kind of like, you know, are they going to be an item? And he's like, they're kind of like a Sam and Diane. I said, do you ever see them getting together? And he was like, oh, maybe like wait on the line, like season five or six. This is before we even shot the pilot. So now that we're at the end of season five, mm -hmm. come to collect. Did I'm you wondering. and Rob jinx the whole show with that conversation? Well, that was that was Rob. <laughs> that was Rob. That was but all yes. you, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to point out that Sam and Diane didn't actually get together. What? Spoiler alert, bro! <laughs> I'm halfway through Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly Long just left. Ugh. It's been a hard week for me. <laughs> so now that you're still renegade and you're running the more graves, are you guys going to band together to fight the government who's trying to push you down, or is, what's the dynamic going to be between the two? I think there's a, there's a mutual respect and understanding that neither of us had it quite right. Like, we, we both want what's best for the people around us and the people we love, and I think um, it's part of its ego, you know, Liv had to see where Major was coming from, and... Um, you know, then we're dealing with things that are bigger than both of ourselves. So, yeah, we are, like, we're, I wouldn't say we're banded together at every turn, but there's a definite respect for each other in the way that we're handling it, and an information that's shared between us, and, yeah, what would you say? Yeah, I would say that we have the same goal with different executions. Like, I think we both... That's why I brought them in. That's why I brought them in, guys. Yeah, we're both just trying to, like, protect people and, and sort of champion justice and, and and all that, but we kind of found ourselves beginning on, on different paths and we've just stayed on them. I think our common goal is the same, which is why it allows for us to have that potential to sort of work together.
and they're more accommodating of each other now. It's not like mutually exclusive sort of parts. It's more things that there are occasionally times when I'll check in and get information from you or vice versa. So um, we approach it differently, but we're not as conflicted about it all now. Yeah, and also with Chase Graves dying and there being sort of a new era at Fillmore Graves, it allows for a bit less rigidity. I think Major was sort of being a good soldier with some of that, which was a little extreme. And also with being the new renegade, like we were both taking over new operations. We were sort of following their orders. Mm -hmm. I think in this season we find now our own voices a bit more. Yeah, there's like a bit more flexibility, a bit more of our stamp yeah. on the renegade and the, and the film more grade stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think that last season felt very intense all the time? Like there was a literal threat of death hanging over lid every episode. Do you think that? This season is a little bit less of that. Or no, is that no. Just coming I'm not going to wait to finish the question. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> definitely not. I mean, the zombie kind of crisis has just gotten worse and worse, and um, has been antagonized by groups even more. So it's certainly the stakes. That's what I say. We just really pulled out all the stops. The stakes are really high. The humor, though, is still really high, which I think is great. You know <laughs> that through all of this drama, we still managed to find out our zombie Tom. Um, yeah. But it's not been a, it, there's no relaxing resting on your laurels this season. I didn't have a wrinkle on his face before the season. Now I have this worry line right this here. This one line he's got now. Which that's is that's the kind of stress. For a -year -old. It's ugh. <laughs> not, I, it's my other friends in high school make fun of me. So they're like, how do you have wrinkles? <laughs> You'll know in two years. I genuinely am developing a full head of gray hair, and I'm like, and I then bleached my the rest of my hair blonde yesterday, and I feel like it is full on separation anxiety from Liv. I've like kind of bob now. It's I'm like, did. I never looked anything like this the whole time I shot, and then now I'm like, clearly finding it hard to say goodbye. <laughs> well, is there any brain throughout the course of the series that you would have liked to have revisited? Um, magician, because I'd love some more tricks. I loved having that guy around teaching us. That was you, fun. you were a bit threatened by him, and it's well, scary. As a, as a fellow magician, and he came around peacocking, you know, I felt a little threatened. Yes, I felt, uh... But I really enjoyed him. I really enjoyed great. him. And it was great to, yeah, learn some tricks. Like, that's what one of the great perks is. Salsa Brain, I was ready to... Well, I was on Salsa Brain this year, and that, that's definitely been told. But um, I was quite ready for that to end, just because of the you dance schedule. It was, like, really that. hard um, to try to learn and work with, you know, a couple of routines with the choreographer after long days on set, so I had a really fun time doing it, but I was appreciative of the sleep. Yeah. Just on cue. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day. Yeah. I mean, I'd almost not want to go back to the well on Teenage Real Brain, but it really was so fun that if, if there was another crack at it, yeah, like, like I said, it's part of me, it's like, don't go back. It was good the first time. You Leave were so it. great. But it was, it was so fun to just to just channel my inner fourteen year old bitchy girl mm -hmm. who is alive and well. <laughs> She's still doing great. Still there. Uh, also going back to certain things, will Liv's mother or brother be seen ever again? Absolutely. You didn't yes. see him staggering around today. Yeah, I was just outside talking with Molly. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. They were I'm allowed to say that yeah, I spoke to Rob Thomas about all this, but that yes we do see them and it's worth the wait. Um, I had some massive unanswered questions around that whole thing obviously and um, it's really, really clever the way that they brought them back in and, and the reasons for absence and everything. So I promise it's, it's worth it. The problem, the problem is that Nick grew up about like twenty years. The guy was with Devin. Him. Yeah, he's like a giant strapping man now. He was like my teenage brother. Does he know? He still doesn't have a worry line. <laughs> you can Botox this out. Exactly. I'll tell him. I'll pass that on. I can't wait for the, the next time we do one of these and I'm just like, I've been drinking lots of water. It's just water. <laughs> water and sleep. Yeah. Uh, you know that um, Malcolm is directing an episode of the season. Um, how much did you, it's also from Blade's point of view, so much, how much you guys are both in it, but can you talk about working with him in that capacity? I worked with him a lot. I mean, we are, yeah, we've already shot it. And, uh, that's, that's been my favorite episode this year. It was, because he's great at directing, and also because it's, like, it's Malcolm who we love. Like, everyone genuinely showed up ready to help him and help him, like, help him succeed. So it went so smoothly, and he's also, like, crazy positive. Like, it's so yeah. contagious that it is, it's, like, effusive. And so, like, the set was light, it was efficient, you know, and then you're just seeing your buddy kick ass in this new light. 
so it was, he was awesome. incredibly prepared and I just think with Malcolm what everybody forgets is because he's not somebody to sing his own praises he's also directed a couple of films before yeah. and he's got a lot of experience so it wasn't like a new director coming in what was cool though it was his first TV episodic episode you know whatever what do you call it episodic television episodic. directing gig and he was so confident because he prepared and he'd done you know that's still a new thing to work for and working for a network and studio and um, and he was so confident with it and he didn't micromanage. I thought it would be easy and tempting to kind of want to have your finger on every pie in the, in the studio and he was really, really great about it. I mean, he trusts us that we have this amazing crew that know what they're doing. They've been doing it for five years on this show too, so it, everybody was geared up and ready to help him as much as they could and he's, he nailed it. We're so, so yeah. proud of him. With, uh, <clears throat> with the, uh, the live major dynamic, are you guys settled into a groove at the start of the season, or is that something that has to build? No groove, no I mean, groove. but, but where it's not as uh, adversarial, because I know it kind of ends quite adversarial. Well, I guess I sort of came back to help you out. We started to find our way, but... Yeah, planted a seed, I feel like, last year. Yeah, we have a couple months have passed mm -hmm. since the finale, from where we pick up. And I think right. it's that thing of we've forgiven each other, but you don't forget all of the difficulty that you've kind of gone through. So it's not like, oh, we're straight back in, you know, best friends, everything's smooth. It's like, it's a very complicated thing. And that's why I say I, I champion them as a relationship in the end, because I think they know the textures of each other and, and how they handle grief together and how they handle, but it, but that stuff makes, but it's not smooth sailing. It's, um, it's a journey that they're on. Yeah, I hope that Liv and Major uh, end up together. But? But I really hope that they find a great couples therapist. Yeah. Because they have a lot to work with. Or they could eat a great couples therapist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robbie, should... Robbie could eat a therapist brain? Gosh damn it. Well, Season six. Well, someone write that down. Spin off. Yeah, who's picking us up? <laughs> Freeform. Just got announced. Do you guys have a preference in terms of if you'd like to see your characters be like cured of zombieism? Or, because um, we were talking earlier about how like that what zombieism means, especially to live, has changed really throughout the course of the show. Mm. At this point, I don't want, I feel like it, similar about humans eating meat. It would be great if an alternative came that was like, you know, growth, whatever those, like, you know, they're trying to make fake meat, and an equivalent of that would be a really good thing, I feel like, for, for zombies. So you don't have to denounce who you've become and who you are, because I think live is so much more interesting and um, empathetic based on her experience, but so I don't want her to feel like she has to reverse or has to mm -hmm. step away. It also doesn't serve all of our um, metaphors that we've been, you know, it's been sort of minorities or people who've been uh, felt marginalized. So I think that it's great for them to still be able, the zombies still to be able to exist. I just think clearly there is something that has to be addressed so that they can live together. So my instinct isn't just to heal her and to make her a human again, but Again, we have we. I don't know the ending. I don't know how they've written it. That's that's what I would like, like a, a fake brain compound to be made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. I guess I would say for Major to stay a zombie, he seems to gravitate towards championing the underdog, and I think when he became a zombie, it sort of gave him a sense of purpose again and uh, advocating for the less fortunate. So in this case, I'd say not nah, leave him in you know the minority and have him uh, you know. Be their champion. Zombie Island. Zombie, Zombie Island. It's gonna make for such a good reality show. <laughs> That's probably spin-off this year. It is. 